Welcome to this edition of Colors of Life. We are still here in the studio in Leicester, in England. Many of us have dreams from when we were children. For some, it may have been to be a pilot, to be a doctor, to travel the world. My guest had one dream, and that was to get an education and a better life than the one she was used to. She grew up in a very poor home, and it looked like she would never realize these dreams. But as we speak to her, we see how the Lord had his hand upon her and has led her steadily to where she's seen those dreams being fulfilled. So please welcome with me, Bosse Mills. So I'm lovely to have you. Thank you. Okay. I'm glad to be here. Okay. I know you said to me, you grew up in a poor home. Yes. And you said you desired what for yourself? Education. Education, yeah. yes. And can you tell us a bit about your background? I know you grew up in a polygamous home. How yeah. was that? Yeah. Yes, um, I'm a, I grew up, I'm three of, I mean, four of us, uh, mom, three, three girls, one boy. Um, mom, very calm person, <laughs> dad, very nice as well, but not enough love as I would love as a child, um, but you know, just had life. <laughs> yeah, and you said your father was educated, but your mother was not educated. Yes. Yeah. That's, and yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, my mom, my mom wasn't educated. My dad was. Um, my grandfather had a lot of wives as well, but he really made sure his children that want to go to school, they had their own education, and the ones that didn't want to, if they want to learn um, handwork. They also did, and the one that didn't want to do anything, he didn't bother himself. But yeah, my dad, he had education, but yeah, they really, didn't really push us at all or put any effort to help us, so yeah. Yes, so and sad. yes, and we know that in many parts of developing countries, um, like where we are from, Nigeria, West Africa, mm -hmm. um, um, families that are that are poor, it's not uncommon mm -hmm. for them to send their children to live with um other families to work for them. Yeah. It's really today, yeah. we know that's child labor, yes. right? Yes. And you experienced that. Yeah, yes. From I, what age? Um, I started doing ourselves from age of 11. Okay. Um, yeah, started doing ourselves from age of 11 till when I was uh, 17. Okay. Yeah. So for about six years, yes. you were living with different families and working that's for them. Yeah. That must have been really, how did you find that? was really hard, okay. um, especially um, my mom is like my best friend. Yeah. And not having her in my around, it was really, really hard for me. And also not just her, also moving from an environment that I was used to, yes. to a new environment was really, really hard. And also um, being that young when you are still developed, you not having the opportunity to be a child not yes. have to grow up really fast. So that was really, really hard. Um, and living with people that they basically most of the time they look at you like you are nobody. I can imagine that. Yeah. And you told me about an interesting incident when you were living with a Muslim woman. Can we, right. what, yeah. what happened? Yeah. So <laughs> I was working in a place like in a cafe before and that was really really hard work fetching water waking up very early morning going to sleep late so i said to my auntie can i work can i do house help instead of you know working in a cafe okay. so she said okay that's all right we'll look for a place for you so she find this woman which her daughter has already worked there before and this woman really like her daughter Okay. So I was sent there. So your auntie's daughter had worked with this woman. That's right. So your auntie sent you to work there as yes, well. Yes, yes. So after my cousin already left, I take the place. And then I started working with this woman. And somehow she just didn't like me. She said, oh, you have to turn to be Muslim before all this. I was told that you are evil, that there's some evil thing about you only when you turn to be Muslim that you'll be set free. So, but to start off with, I won't listen to her. I remember one day, um, she wasn't around, she traveled to Lagos, I think, and we were in Ibadan. And um, her husband wasn't home, as, I mean, he went to sleep, 
go to his second wife's house and lock us. I was in the house with their nie nephew. Okay. And he locked us in the house before leaving the How night. How old were you? I think around that time, my mom's been like maybe 13. And then and the, the nephew was? The boy was around 10. Okay. Yeah. So he locked us in. I don't know what he was thinking. But the next morning, we woke up to open the door to go out. And we couldn't go out. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, I mean, at this point, I, I, not growing up in a proper Christian home, I just always, I mean, for some reason, I always drawn to prayer, so I don't know why. Um, but that day, I now thought, okay, if this Jesus that people always call him, if it's, this Jesus is real, then you have to help us open this door. So I've already, we've already tried to open the door long time, not able to open the door. And I said this prayer, I said, Lord Jesus, if truly you are real, please, would you open this door? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's some faith. Yeah, yeah. So I said, please, would you open this door? And then I turned the handle and the door opened. Really? And I say, he, this Jesus is real. <laughs> Bosse, we're going to take a break now. When we come back, then we'll go to Bonnie Island and just talk about your experience on Bonnie Island. And we know that it was a defining moment for you because something happened there that would change the trajectory of your life. That's right. Okay, thank, thank you. you. So thank you. stay with us. We are listening to this fascinating um, testimony of Bosse Mills from child labor to working as house help and still just... Um, hanging on to God and praying and trusting God for a better life. You don't want to miss this. Welcome back to the Colors of Life show. We're talking to Bosse Mills. She's taken us from her childhood in Oyo State. And now we've crossed over to southern Nigeria, Bonnie Island, where events happened that changed her life. So let's hear Bosse's story. So you get to Bonnie Island and you're living with the family. Yeah. And what's the difference this time? Because you're still working as a yes, house help. Yeah. That's right. So when I first got there, it was I just felt like this this is it. <laughs> like I don't know <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I just felt yes. Yes. You know, somehow it's like this is kind of life I want. Yes. Like level for my future life. Yes, and I, I can understand that because Bonnie Island was just an idyllic community beautiful we yeah. had golf courses mm -hmm. we had international standard yeah. clubhouse yeah. swimming pool yeah. and wow it was just like um, having the best of both yeah. worlds it's like small london exactly small <laughs> london i like that and yet having just that beauty of nigeria <laughs> the the warmth the relationships the colorful life and food yeah. and all that yeah. yeah so tell me yeah so i remember when i first got there like uh, compared to this other family that I work with, Noyo, um, we do family prayer together in okay. the evening before going to bed. Okay. And that already makes me excited. I was like, ah, this is nice. So I like these people. <laughs> 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 and then after some time, the, uh, I remember when I first got there as well, uh, the mommy, she took us, took me out, bought me new clothes. And okay. I was like, ah, this is That's really the good wife though. of the family. Yes. So you had the wife, her husband, and two daughters. Yes. yes. Okay. And bought me new clothes. I was really, really happy. I've never had that before because the places I've worked before, I used to be the one that buy my own clothes mm. except uh, food. So I was so happy that I was, and you know, giving new clothes. To. And then um, um, after some time, you were was, going to church as well. Yes. Okay. After so you some, liked that. Yes. Okay. After some time, they will some evening they will ask us pray okay and that makes me very happy as they ask me to pray <laughs> <laughs> and they asked me to pray in yoruba okay. which was fine you know so we we'll pray and that makes me feel ah this is really nice so because these other people will not let me even come near prayer so okay. this is you know they makes me feel like part of the family, family. okay so 
Yo, so that was my first experience. Just I think just having that devotion together, not yeah. just like they do it like, oh, it's only our family. Yeah. Know, putting us part of it. Yes, so because that, here you were far away from home. Yeah. So so that's very important to us as Christians to be kind to strangers as yeah. it were, because even the scriptures yeah. does say mm -hmm. be kind to to people, especially strangers, yeah. because that way many have entertained angels mm. without without knowing it. Yeah, mm. your story reminds me of Joseph. Mm. You know, so Joseph was a dreamer, just mm. like you. And mm. next thing, he found himself in a pit. Yeah, and Joseph too was working mm. as a house help in a house, but yeah. God was preparing him mm. to go to the top office yeah. of the land. So watch out, boss. Yeah. I don't know where you. Yes. <laughs> It's funny because, again, not knowing anything in the Bible, not having that education, I've never read Bible. Okay. So I don't even understand that there's a story like in the that. Bible that is like Thing that. I think again. it was like probably later, later in my life now that mm. I start knowing the story of uh, um, Joseph. Joseph yeah. So it, it took me years to mm. know that God is actually speaking to to me through dream because okay. as a child I used to have a dream that um, I'm flying very free okay and then <laughs> I didn't know what it means yeah. and also when I was working with this family there was a night where I had a dream that my um, one of my family member which was witchcraft man okay. was chasing my mom okay. to kill her yeah. and then I put my on this he was chasing my mom on this uncompleted building okay. and I put my mom uh, behind I mean in my front and I was at the middle okay. and I was commanding this person to leave my mother in Jesus name okay. leave my mother in Jesus name and then he keep chasing, he keep chasing. And we go into this place now that there's nowhere else to go on top of the building and nowhere else to go. But I just stand there and say, you cannot get my mother. I command you in the name of Jesus. You have to leave her alone. We'll see how you're going to come across. So I was praying. And then I woke up scared and start crying and went and woke on my I woke my boss like mommy daddy come and pray for us mm. they're about to kill my mom <laughs> and then they were like what's wrong come down come come down i think it was like 3 a.m in the in the morning and they got up and said okay let's pray nothing we know there's nothing wrong with your mom so they pray and then the next day in the evening we call my auntie and my auntie is like and you know when you walk far away like that they don't see you um, they don't want to tell you bad news anyway. Yeah. So my answer was, nothing is wrong, nothing is wrong. Your mother is fine. I was like, from where? You don't even hear from my mom. <laughs> hmm. So, but the funny thing is, or the amazing thing is, when I finished working with this family and went back home, I asked my sister, at this time, this month, is anything wrong with mom? And my sister I said, yeah, mom was really unwell at that time, seriously unwell. Hmm. Interesting. So it just reminds us that there are different ways God speaks. Mm. Dreams are yeah. one of the ways that yeah. the Lord speaks. So I would say we shouldn't ignore our dreams. Mm. And um, you never go wrong praying mm. about something, no. particularly when it's a negative thing. Yeah. There's another very interesting example in the scripture, Naaman. Mm. Naaman was the uh, head, uh, head of the Syrian army. Mm. And um, they had gone to war mm. against Israel. Yeah. And they they captured people as, mm. as they would in those days. Yeah. And amongst them was a little girl who wow. came to work in Naaman's house wow. as a house help, yeah. as an assistant yeah. to his wife. Now, when Naaman um, had leprosy mm. and he just didn't know what to do, mm. that little girl yeah. stood up yeah. and she said, oh, there's a prophet in Israel. Mm. If um, my boss can just get that prophet to pray yeah. for him, he will be healed. Mm. So it's interesting that she was at a disadvantage, mm. in a disadvantaged yeah. position as it were, yeah. but she still um, was used by God. Mm. And she, you know, 
offered herself to be a blessing yeah. to that family. So yeah. that's really so yeah. interesting that yeah. wherever we find ourselves in life, yeah. God is watching, yeah. God is interested, yeah. and he can use us for his yeah. glory. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bosset. So um, stay with us in this interesting conversation. When we come back, we're rounding up with um, the story of a vision that revealed something in Bosset's life that God wanted to deal with and how, what happened that made Bonnie Island a turning point mm. in Bosset's life. You don't want to miss this. Welcome back to the concluding part of this Colors of Life show where I'm in conversation with um, Bosse Mills. And Bosse is going to share some um, supernatural experiences she's had with God that she says shows her that God is so real and how her coming to Bonny Island was a turning point mm. in her life. So Bosse, let's start with the revelation your pastors at the Baptist Church on Bonny Island had. Tell us about that. Yeah, thank you. So when I, after I got married, came to the UK and God bless us. We, I was, I got pregnant. I, I went back to Nigeria for my settlement visa, and the plan was that I was going to get the visa in, you know, by the time I'll, I'll be three months pregnant, so nobody will know that I was pregnant. Just, you know, come here and give birth quietly. Mm -hmm. And then we were waiting, waiting, waiting for my visa to come out. Visa won't come out. And then uh, at this point, I think I was between four or five months pregnant. So I went to my pastor who married us and said, Daddy, you are the one that married us. So this marriage cannot crash. So what are you going to do, Daddy? <laughs> and then he said, OK, we'll meet together and pray. So he called the other pastors from uh, Bonny Island. They all came together to our church. So we met this uh, morning. And we were praying. Why we were praying, uh, I can't really remember whether it was my pastor or it was the other pastor that saw the picture of a coffin, a small coffin. And they said, what is this that we are seeing? We can see, a, I can see a coffin, something like you worship that they already connect you with, that you cannot be separated from. And I was like, ah. I just remember when I was growing up, I was told I have to do this kind of thing, but it's still the same God we are following. Okay, so what the pastor saw, which was a coffin and that yeah. you were connected to it in worship, and yes. you're saying in reality, yeah. as a child, yeah. you had to go and worship yeah. at a coffin yeah. or what? So we have this, uh, they, they had this coffin made for me okay. um, to in our, put in our house, in our bedroom, and then in the morning or whenever, in the morning, afternoon, I will go there, put some food in this coffin. Okay. Then uh, worship and tell it, you know, you going to bless me and blah, blah, blah. Hmm. And then there was a time where I even saw a money, small money. Hmm. <laughs> but as a small child, I think ah, as I have arrived. <laughs> yes, because you're, you, you come to this coffin and you see money there. Yeah. So you think, oh, this thing I'm worshipping has yeah. blessed yeah. me. Yeah, hmm. yeah. And then um, I said to them, yeah, that's, that's right, that there's a something like that. And they say, okay, this is part of the delay of your visa. They don't want you to move forward because now you are choosing a different God. Mm. that they don't like it. You've now become a Christian. So they don't like it. So they, they try everything to stop you moving forward. So they pray, and we pray that the, the coffin will be born through the power of God. God, okay. That didn't change any situation in terms of my visa coming. Okay. Um, I still end up having my son in Nigeria. So I, I end up moving to Ibadan. I was now in contact with one of my cousins that was in Ibadan. And then they have this uh, local church that they go to. 
and then the first day I we go, when they I think it was Friday evening why they were beginning of the prayer it wasn't even that long we just start praying that's how I fell in anointed okay. of God and that was the first time ever wow. and I was heavily pregnant mm. and then you didn't I, hurt yourself no okay. no God is faithful <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, yeah, I was on the ground. The ushers came, picked me up, and sat me down. And that day, I, I had this feeling that there's something that God has broken, but I didn't know what it was. The next day, Saturday, again, they were praying again, I think it's to break every chain that is holding you down to move forward. And then again, we start praying on the floor again hmm. in the anointed of God. And then um, I think... Five days later, I gave birth to Bamio. Wow. And then you left for the UK? How um, long not after? Not immediately. Um, okay. uh, so it wasn't long after that my visa came out. Okay. And then um, we now have to wait for Bamio's passport, British okay. passport. I mean, we did Nigeria passport immediately. That one wasn't long, but uh, British passport because he was born outside. The uh, UK. Yeah, so yeah. he was more... We want to be sure that, you know, mm. the pregnancy is not from someone else. So, <laughs> yeah. So. Okay, excellent. I'm going to fast forward um, a bit because we are running out of time. Fast forward to the UK. You're in the UK. You go to the New Wine um, Convention. Yeah. Um, and you have an interesting experience that is connected to something that happened back in Nigeria. So yeah. tell me about it. Yeah. So every year we go to this uh, uh, UK convention that is a, a camp okay. and then this day I was um, I just I'm one of these people that I go to the front for prayer okay. all the time okay. I don't know why <laughs> I just don't worry I'm like that too. <laughs> I just love to be prayed for I love to pray anything just you know yeah. so I just went to the front for prayer and why these people are praying for me they just gently tap me and say, um, we are seeing something, something like a coffin. What is that about? Mm. I was like, God, <laughs> not you again, this coffin. <laughs> what have I done to you? <laughs> so, and these are not Nigerian pastors. These no, are English these are pastors. British, white yeah. British, 100%. And they are not even pastors. Okay. They are just, Christians, you know, yeah. Christian that they are trained to know how to pray for people yeah. with the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. And then they, they saw this thing. I, I mean, before they even saw that, when they were praying for me, I fell on the anointed of God on okay. the floor. And they gently wake me up and say, this is what we are seeing. So what did they see? They said that they can see a wooden coffin. Oh. And I remember it very well. Hmm. They said they can see a wooden coffin. And it's like, is a place that I used to worship that they don't want to let go of me. That what is it? Hmm. I say, ah, okay. Hmm. So yes. you told them about it? Yeah, I told And then them. something interesting happened because you called your family. Yeah. And what did you find out? Because you'd had that revelation before in Bonnie. In Bonnie. Yeah. So what did you find out yeah. from them? So I asked my mom. Hey, so when I asked my mom, I say, what are you see? Do you see have that coffin in the house? And she say yes. Do you still do something with that coffin? She say yes. Sometimes I still pull food there hmm. because they say I, we must do so so that we don't lose you. So hmm. even though I wasn't there active anymore hmm. with this thing, my mom on your was, behalf. So you were still tied somehow. So I was <laughs> being pulling between yeah. evil spirit and God power yeah. so they were so i didn't even know my mom after we've been we've already praying bonnie for god to burn it down yeah. because my mom of course did not know much about you know the power of god she just thought uh, they have that fear of they don't have that confidence in christ so yeah. she had that fear that if she doesn't do something then something will happen, happen to me to but after the second one they burnt it yes they so did. after the second one i call my mom and my yeah. dad and say you people have to bond this thing. It's not for you to choose who I should follow. Yeah. This is my partner. Yeah. It's Christ. Yeah. And then I call my sister. Thankfully, at this point, my siblings 
who are now a believer as well before then they want. Yeah. So at this point, my sisters who are now a believer through me again, God using me, telling them about Christ, and they went, and I said to them, take them to this uh, uh, Catholic, I mean Baptist church and ask the pastor to pray and to burn it. And that's been the end of that situation. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, there's another interesting incident you told me about, a revelation again by the power of God, something you'd experienced and you'd never spoken about. Yeah. Can you tell us about that yeah. quickly yeah. before we... All right. I'll try. <laughs> Thank you. So when I was young, um, I was uh, sexually abused by my uncle. Um, then um, I didn't really... I didn't know... Because at that point, I think I was maybe like eight or nine. I can't quite remember what age I was. And then um, I went to my auntie's house. Just I saw some uh, clothes outside that she washed that they are now dry. So I thought, let me take them inside and fold them for her. And that was when our husband came in hmm. and did whatever he wanted to do with hmm. me. From this point, I knew something happened that is not right. And, but I didn't have a word for it. Yeah. So it happened and it stayed there. Uh, fast forward many years later, I was in the UK again in New Wine, and they were praying for me. While they were praying for me, they, they gently wake me up from the power of the Holy Spirit on me again and say, um, sorry, just in case if we are wrong, forgive us. But we hear a word, something to do with the sexually abuse as a child. Wow. And God is How saying. How precise. And, and they say, God is saying, give it to me. And that day was the first time anybody ever say something. And if I've not even believed in God all my life to this point, that day I said, there's no way. I can't hide from this God. Because you'd never uttered a word about that experience to anyone at Not all. Not at all. Wow. Not at all. And then you, you said to me that you felt this anger rise here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was this anger that came from deep in that I just feel like I want that person in my front and just punch. Hmm. And I think it was that anger that God is saying, give it to me. Okay. And you did. And I did. And then what did that do for you? From that day on, I don't feel like, I don't feel guilty. Okay. I don't feel like um, this person owe me. Okay. Because before then, that is the way I felt like, you know, they, um, I was the one that caused it. Yes. If I have not gone there, that would oh. not have happened. Mm -hmm. From that day on, they just pray for me that God do bring his healing upon me. And he and, did. And they said to me, just keep praying. Yeah for this person okay. and that was what I did and team. that's how you got yeah. delivered yeah. wow thank you so so much Bosse. you know the story of your life reminds me of Ephesians chapter 3 I believe from verse 21 mm -hmm. that describes God as he who is able to do exceedingly mm -hmm abundantly above what we can ever think or imagine yeah. and it's such a blessing it mm -hmm. it certainly encourages me it um, shows me the power of God that God is so real yeah. you know and how he makes all things beautiful yes. in our lives thank you for sharing thank your you. story I'm thank so you. grateful thank you. Wow, thank you for staying with us on this special edition of the Colors of Life I'm sure remember to um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember to like us, leave a comment, share our videos. I'm sure it will bless someone. Look forward to being with you again. Yeah.